Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Corinne the Imperfectionist and I am so glad that you are joining me today. I want to share a little story with you before I get started in today's topic. Today I had it all planned out that I was going to have an awesome homeschool field trip video for you guys. My husband actually took the initiative to plan a homeschool trip for us. And we went to the Contemporary Art Museum because they had a nice um, sensory exhibit for children set up before the museum actually opened. And so we made the trip and we made some cute little videos and I took some awesome shots of Raleigh, North Carolina of the, the skyscrapers and the scenery there and of all the things that my girls did within the museum. And then I got home and I was ready to upload everything that I recorded from my phone onto my computer. And when I plugged in my phone to the computer, the cord that I had, it glitched. And so everything is gone. And not only are my photos and videos from today gone, but all of my photos and videos from my phone, period. They're just gone. So since that video was a total bust, <laughs> Since that video ended up being a total best, I have a new topic. And today's topic are five things that you should stop doing right now as a homeschool mom. I'm carrying your children. It is really easy when you are homeschooling your children to compare your children to someone else's children who are either homeschooling or children who are in a brick and mortar school. Because in a traditional school setting, Children are pretty much ranked according to the grades that they make. And you know that a child is doing well because they're making straight A's and you know that a child is not doing so well if their grades are not so high. And you can kind of compare children based on grade point average and things like that. When you are at home and you are teaching your children, you can actually have a grading scale, but a lot of homeschool parents actually don't. And for those of us who don't, it becomes really difficult to know just how well your children are doing or figuring out some sort of way to um, I guess, rate how well your children are doing. But don't compare your children to other people's children. Just because somebody else knows their times tables already doesn't mean that your children are necessarily going to know them. And I noticed with homeschooling, it's really awesome to be able to just spend the time to really nurture your child's strengths because that's probably where they're going to flourish and where they're going to, you know, gain an income one day or where they're going to help the world with those particular talents and skills. And other things, they probably just need to know the basics to be able to function in society. So don't compare your children because your child is not that other person's child. And where your children may be excelling, that other person's child may not be. Stop paying for free stuff. I know that especially beginner homeschool parents, you feel like there's a lot of things that you have to buy to prepare for teaching your child. But there's a lot of things that people buy and purchase like a curriculum and worksheets and a lot of things that you don't necessarily need to spend money on. One thing that I noticed over time that my girls loathe worksheets. They really don't like having to do worksheets unless it's absolutely necessary. I started to notice when I had purchased a bunch of worksheets from a very expensive curriculum that if I took the same activities that were on a worksheet and I just put it on a dry erase board, my girls were more apt to do them. They're accomplishing the same goal, but the only cost was for the dry erase board and the markers. And those are things that you can use over and over and over again, or you might already have in your home and you don't have to spend the money on buying these really beautiful printed worksheets. So if you can find little tricks like that that you can do, save yourself the money. Don't go out and buy little counter manipulatives when there's like buttons around your house that you can count or there's little Cheerios, Cheerio cereal that your children can sit there and count. And then they can do that at snack time and you, they've got a little snack. So stop spending money on things that you don't have to spend money on. Be creative and figure out ways to save yourself money and don't spend a ton of money on a curriculum. <laughs> Please, please stop neglecting yourself. It is really easy, especially the stay-at-home moms, where already your primary focus is taking care of house and home and kids. It is really easy to forget yourself. Moms have this struggle, period, whether you're a homeschool mom or not. And then when you add this extra layer of homeschooling where you are the one responsible for your child's education completely, 
you forget yourself and your whole focus is just making sure that your kids learn everything that they need to learn and that they're taken care of. And then you have to take care of house and home. But somewhere in there, you have to make sure that you make time for yourself. This past school year, my husband was gone in Afghanistan and you know, I was here by myself taking care of the girls, which I did help for, have help from my parents who are amazing. But day to day, I was on the daily grind taking care of the girls myself. I was really neglecting myself. I wasn't really eating my meals as much as I should. I was like skipping meals and then I would like binge eat. <laughs> and I wasn't drinking enough water and I just really was not taking care of myself. And I had waist length hair. My hair was like down to here and it started getting thinner and thinner because anyone who knows anything about biology, if your body's not getting the nutrients that it really needs, everything that's not necessary for survival starts to wither away first. So my hair started getting really thin and looking horrible. And so I ended up having to crop my hair into a bob before the damage, you know, trickled all the way up to the root of my hair. I had a very severe migraine to the point where I was vomiting and I just felt awful. And I had to call my parents like, I need help because I'm crying, I'm vomiting, I can't take care of the kids, something's wrong with me. Like I've had headaches before, but I I feel like I'm dying. And come to find out, I was having migraines and the migraines were from me being dehydrated. I wasn't even drinking enough water, y'all, because I was thinking about everybody but myself. So I know that it's really hard as a mom and it's hard as a homeschool mom to put the attention on yourself and we put ourselves on the back burner. But you have got to take care of yourself. Stop neglecting yourself. Your kids are not going to be able to do anything if something happens to you. So take care of yourself. There are so many resources out there and so many ways that your children can learn that you don't have to just be the sole teacher yourself. Now, if you do choose to pay for some sort of curriculum for your children to learn, there are actually curricula out there where there's teachers who will teach your children for you in whatever subjects that you choose. So if you are great at English, but not so great in math and science, then you can actually buy a curriculum where there will be a teacher who will teach your child in those specific subjects. And so your children will be stronger in those areas and you won't have to stress so much because you're trying to teach your children multiple subjects, especially subjects that you're not so great at. Sometimes there are classes at the public library or there's an arts council in your community where you can take your children to go experience different things where it may not necessarily be your forte or you may not have any knowledge or you might actually know about those things, but you just need some time to kind of take a break and not carry the load all by yourself. So get involved in your community, look for different things that are going on, find people, network. That's why socializing is important. If you get to know people who are wise or knowledgeable in certain areas, then maybe they can come and step in and do a class with your child or tutor your child or different things like that. But don't feel like because you are homeschooling that you have to teach your child every single thing that they need to know. Okay. It is very easy to blame yourself when your child is not picking up on a concept easily. It is very easy to you know, kind of blame yourself if your child is behind or if your child is advanced and you can't really seem to keep up with them or life just gets so busy and challenging and you just seem like you can't do it all. Stop being so hard on yourself. You're only human. And I know that there's a lot of people out there where it looks like they're just killing it in the homeschool game. They have like six kids and their kids are all doing excellent. And one of their children just graduated from college at age 15 and all of this kind of stuff. And you're just thinking, why can't I find my groove? Okay, some of those people are fronting. Um, not saying that there aren't people who are doing an amazing job at homeschooling, but some people, they're only showing you the best. Like even myself, if I'm uploading videos about my family and everything, most of the time I'm going to show you something that you can learn from. But trust me, we have bad days. There are some days where it's just like, you know what? It's only 10 o'clock and we only started at 930, but we're going to wrap it up for today. We're just going to cuddle and we're going to read some books because mommy didn't plan this out very well or somebody's sick or somebody doesn't feel well. Somebody's got an attitude. There are bad days and don't feel bad because if you sent your children off to school somewhere, that classroom teacher has bad days just like that too. Think back to when you were in school. Did you have a teacher who just pretty much was like, everybody put your heads down, put your heads down and be quiet. If anybody talks, I'm going to put your name on the board. 
You know, teachers have bad days and you're no exception. Just because you birthed them or just because you helped to birth them if you're a dad who's homeschooling, don't think that that's supposed to mean that you have it all together and that your children are supposed to always be in line. Sometimes that means your kids are going to act out more because they're more comfortable with you. So don't be so hard on yourself. Just do the best that you can. And in areas where you don't feel so strong, go out, look for resources, network with people who are knowledgeable in those areas and get the job done. So don't be so hard on yourself. You're doing a great job. When you mess up, see it as an opportunity to learn. I've messed up a lot, but guess what? My girls are super smart. <laughs> they're super smart. And they're actually learning from me that, okay, I can make mistakes. I can mess up. But I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep trying. And that is one of the most important lessons that your children can learn, that you're going to fail in life. There's, you cannot avoid failures. Failure is going to happen. Disappointments are going to happen. But it's what you do after the disappointment and the failures that really makes you who you are. And that's where you build character. So don't feel like you have to be perfect because your children aren't perfect either. And we want them to be able to learn from us how to thrive in a life where things are always imperfect. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, you know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. If you have any other ideas of topics that you would like to hear me talk about and discuss, then hit me in the comments. Okay, but most of all, out of all these things, make sure that you love yourselves. Goodbye, loves.